Next in our notes, we're learning about scientific notation. This is also known as exponential notation. We use scientific notation to express very large numbers or very small numbers. For example, in chemistry, if we were to um, describe the mass of a single atom of gold, the mass of a single atom of gold is extremely tiny. Notice here, we have a decimal, and then after the decimal, we have a total of 21 zeros and then 327 grams. So we talked about in our previous lesson accuracy and precision, and if you were recording this number, it would be extremely um, easy to make a careless mistake, maybe miss writing down a zero. If you miscounted the zeros. Um, and we want to strive for accuracy and precision in all of our um, measurements that we um, are making. So in order to uh, avoid any confusion, we can write and express this very tiny number in scientific notation. Another number that we talk about in chemistry is Avogadro's number. We use it to convert from our representative particles to something called the mole that we'll learn about later. Notice this is an extremely large value number, much greater than one. So this number here, if you look at the ending zeros, these are called trailing zeros, there's 20 of them. But again, you could easily miscount these zeros and write down the incorrect number. So what we do is we write our numbers in the form of scientific notation, otherwise known, as I said, as exponential notation. Numbers in scientific notation are written in the form of m times 10 to the nth power. m represents your coefficient. The coefficient is a number that is between 1 and 10. So it can be greater than or equal to 1, but it must be less than 10. Then you, that will be followed by a times 10. This is standard. So your coefficient times 10, and then you'll have your exponent here. n represents your exponent. The exponent can be a positive or a negative whole number. It must be a whole number, however. If the value of your exponent n is positive, what that indicates to us is that the quantity we're representing, m times 10 to the nth power, is a number that's greater than 1. And for our reference point, we're going to call that a really big number. So if the n is positive, if your exponent is a positive number, that means when the number is written in its common or standard form, it's a really big number. If the value for n is negative, so if the sign of n is negative, that means that the m times 10 to the nth power, the number we're representing, is a number less than 1 in its standard form. We're going to call those little bitty numbers. Okay. So if we go back to the previous slide, let me back up just a tad. The mass of a single atom, this would be one of those little bitty numbers that we would be talking about. So when we write this number in the scientific notation, what kind of exponent will it have? That's right, since it's a little tiny number, it's going to have a negative exponent. Avogadro's number is one of those great big numbers that I was talking about, so its exponent will be positive. So let's write down the steps next of how would you write a number in scientific notation. To write a number in scientific notation, first thing you want to do is move your decimal either right or left, but you're going to move it so that your m, your coefficient, will be greater than or equal to 1, but it must be less than 10. Second, the value of your exponent will be a positive number. If the number you had originally, before you moved your decimal, was greater than 1. So that was with those big numbers that I was talking about. 
And remember, for our reference point, we're calling any number before you changed it to scientific that was greater than 1. Those are the big numbers. Your exponent will be negative number if the number you had originally was less than 1. Those are those little bitty numbers. Tiny, tiny numbers. The exponent itself is going to be equal to the number of places that you moved your decimal. So in step one, when you're moving your decimal, you need to count how many places you moved your decimal. When you stop moving your decimal, ever how many places you moved your decimal, that's what the value of the exponent is equal to. The sign of the exponent depends on if it was a large quantity or a tiny quantity before you changed it. So let's look at some examples here. Let's practice. So here we have a number, 157,000. This would be one of those great big numbers. So before I even start, I know that the sign of my exponent is going to be positive because this is a large number before I move the decimal. Now the decimal is understood to be here. So since the decimal is here, when I move my decimal, I'm moving it one, two, three, four, five places. So when I stop moving my decimal, my value of my coefficient is 1.57. Now, you don't have to write these trailing zeros here down. You can just write 1.57. Notice this is greater than 1 but less than 10. And then we have the times 10. That's the standard that goes. Now, we moved our decimal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places. So that means the value of the exponent is 5. And the sign of the exponent is going to be a positive sign because this was a big number before I moved it. So 1.57 times 10 to the fifth power is the answer. Let's look at number two. This is a very tiny number, so it's less than one. Notice where the decimal is. That means when I move my decimal and decide the value of my exponent, the exponent's going to be negative because this is a tiny number. So let's move our decimal. One, two, three, four. This is where I'm stopping my decimal right here. Notice if I stop my decimal there, I get 4.32. This number is our coefficient, and notice it's greater than one, but it's less than 10. You write times 10, and we moved our decimal 1, 2, 3, 4 places. And since this was a small number, before I changed it, it represents a tiny quantity. It's going to have a negative exponent. Now you try these three, pause the video, and then resume the video and check your answers. I'm going to go ahead and do these for time's sake. For this number, I need to move it 1, 2, 3 places to get my decimal in the right place. 3.682 times 10 to the negative, because that was a tiny number, I moved it 1, 2, 3 places, so negative 3 is what you should get on that one. This is a large number, so when I moved my decimal, 5.892, and then I had to move my decimal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places, so times 10 to the fifth power, positive exponent because that was a great big number before I moved it in scientific notation. Here. Move my decimal one, two places. That gives me 7.62 times 10 to the positive 2. Notice all of these coefficients. These are the coefficients, which was the m we talked about on the other slide. These have to be greater than or equal to 1 but less than 10, and that is the case for all of these. And our exponent is equal to the number of places we moved our decimal. And the sign of your exponent lets you know if it was a tiny number before you changed it or a large quantity before you changed it. Okay. Now, if you can put a number in scientific notation, you also need, need to be able to take it out of scientific notation, put it in the common or the long form. So let's try these. Here we have a positive exponent, which means when my number's in common form, I need to have a number greater than 1, or this coefficient has to get bigger by one place. So I'm going to move my decimal one place. That's going to give me 91.4. On number two, this is a negative exponent, which means i got to move my decimal 10 places to make this number smaller. So I'm going to move it 10 places backwards. i got to make this a tiny number. So upon moving the decimal 10 places backwards, I will have a decimal and nine zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 